Okay, I'm Tom Carlone, and this is a brief introduction to the conjugate gradient method. We'll be looking at sort of what it's used for, um, a few applications, and a little bit of the math behind it at a high level. So starting with applications and what are we trying to do, the conjugate gradient method is an optimization technique. So if you want to minimize power consumption, or maybe you want to minimize um, torques, or some trajectory of a robot arm you're designing, or maybe your path planning, the potential field, um, really any application where you have some sort of cost function that you want to minimize. And we'll also see that this has applications in solving linear systems of equations in the form AX equals B, and that's because they can be uh, equivalent to minimizing the quadratic form of this equation. So you can see that taking the derivatives of the quadratic form gets x prime of x equals ax minus b, and setting the derivative equals to zero, we see that we get a solution for ax equals b by finding the minimum of the quadratic form. So starting with a little background, we're reviewing the steepest descent method, which is sort of a precursor optimization algorithm to conjugate gradient, and it's a pretty simple and effective method it starts by taking some guesset of x and then finding the gradient um, at that point. So we saw from the previous slide that the derivative of the quadratic function is ax minus b. And so the negative of that is just b minus ax. And we'll call that the residual r, which is also the gradient. And that's the vector pointing in the direction of steepest descent. So all we do to update our new um, estimation of the solution x is move along the direction of the steepest descent r by amount alpha. And alpha is a way of optimizing our movement along this direction in a line search. So we'll take a look at a MATLAB example of this. Um, here we have two equations 5x1 plus 2x2 equals minus 2, and 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 4. So this system of two equations can be written in the form ax equals b in this matrix form here. And so the goal we want to do is find a solution to this problem by minimizing its quadratic form um, shown here. So let's skip over to MATLAB and run a script. So as I mentioned, we have our matrix defined uh, here and our B vector defined here. And this plot here shows the quadratic function, um, which is what we want to find the minimum of to find the solution to our linear system of equations. So this black dot here is our initial guess of where the minimum be. It's pretty arbitrary, it doesn't matter where you start. And so then you take the gradient um, or direction of steepest descent at this point um, and do a line minimization along that direction. So you can see that's where this plane intersects the function we're trying to minimize. From the top view, you can see we're trying to find a minimum along this line, which is found to be the red point right here. So now we use this as our new uh, guess of x. So we calculate the gradient again and get a new direction of steepest descent shown by this plane, which points us in a new direction. And again, we do a, a line optimization search along the, this intersection and find that the minimum was here. So this is repeated um, to some convergence criteria. And eventually, we see that it found a point minus 1.27 and 2.18 was found to be a local minimum in nine iterations. And to check that, we can do our A matrix times the X that it just calculated, and see that we get our B vector back, minus two and four, which is what we want. So this is not a bad method. It got us there um, in nine iterations in, the, in this example. But conjugate gradient asks, can we do better? Um, 
than C57? And the answer is yes, by taking steps that are orthogonal, or more specifically, A orthogonal. So we define uh, two vectors to be A orthogonal if DI uh, transpose A DJ equals zero, um, which is a little bit uh, abstract, but you can visualize it um, by these plots. So this is a, a contour plot with pairs of vectors that are A orthogonal. And if you could imagine that this um, sheet of paper is stretchable, so you can warp it and stretch it in different directions, then you could you can imagine stretching it out so that the contours are circles. And that results in what you see here, where now the vectors are orthogonal in the conventional sense, which is the dot product is zero and they are perpendicular. So the result of this method is that new residuals are orthogonal to all previous residuals and search directions. And new search directions are constructed um, from the residual to be A orthogonal to all previous residuals and search directions. So without going into too much detail, but the, this is the resulting algorithm that accomplishes that. Um, it starts in the same way that grade uh, steepest descent does by initializing the D and residual R vectors to just be the negative gradient. And then the rest, these five iterative steps, um, repeat at each iteration. And you can see they're really not too different from steepest descent. Um, instead of updating x along the direction of the steepest descent r, it's now along the direction of d, which is constructed to be a orthogonal um, from from the residual. So this turns out to be a pretty powerful tool and optimization technique. Let's go back to the same MATLAB demo. And now run conjugate gradient. So we have the same problem here. We have the same initial guess point up here. Uh, and you can see the first step looks about the same. Um, but what's important is the second step gets us to the same solution, uh, which you can see is much quicker than what Steepus Descent did. And this is because it's taking uh, steps that are A orthogonal so that future steps never undo or redo optimization that the previous step did, um, making it much more efficient. You can see that solution again, um, it's the same, and it gets us to our a B vector. So in summary, um, conjugate gradient is a much better way than steepest ascent for most optimization problems. Um, as we saw in the example, the MATLAB example I showed, it got to the minimum of the function in just two steps, um, which is what this red line is showing, as opposed to this green line, which is steepest descent. And you can see that takes a much more zigzaggy motion. And conjugate gradient typically converges in end innervation. So in our example, n was 2, because we had two variables, x1 and x2. Um, but in general, n can be very big. Maybe it's 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. And that's when the usefulness of conjugate gradient really comes into play. And we also looked at a fairly simple example of solving a, a convex problem using the quadratic form of linear system of equations. But really, um, conjugate gradient can be applied to any um, function that's continuous and differentiable, which means you can take the gradient at any point. So that just about wraps it up. If you're interested in looking more into conjugate gradient, some of the derivations and math behind it, you can check out some of these references. Uh, this first one's particularly good. And that's it. Thanks for listening.